All right, so customer authorized removing the valve cover and inspecting why the intake valves are not opening. Let's, uh, let's get it done. Let me peel back the onion here and place your bets now. What are we going to find under the cover? All right, only took a few minutes here. Let this valve cover loosened up. Let's get the wiring harness out of the way. And it should pop right up. Oh, there's one more bolt holding that pipe on. Let me uh, pop that off. Well, I absolutely love it. What do we know? We've got two rollers just hanging out in here. They're not on the intake valves for cylinder number three. Mystery solved. Now, we have to loosen up the camshafts and get those uh, followers back in there. Hopefully we can do that without disturbing things too much. Um, amazing. I'm going to take a picture of this and send it to the customer. Alright, let's go fishing. We have one roller follower. Looks to be okay. Here's number two. Again, seems to be okay. And uh, we need one more piece to put this valve train back together. That would be the valve stem cap on this valve. You see this one is still has it, this one does not. Uh, I don't know where that went. I'm going to take a closer look in, in, in the head. What if it uh, migrated and fell down one of the oil drain holes? I mean, these things are pretty small. Hmm. Maybe we need one part that we don't have. All right, so the path of least resistance here is just to loosen up all the cam caps so the cams can lift up a bit. So we can squeeze those rollers back in. So for now, I'm just going to put one back in so it'll run at least halfway decent so I can drive it in and out. And then we'll have to go to the dealer and get a replacement cap for the missing one. So that's unfortunate that some parts will be required. But no way around it. I want to fix it right. lift up the other ones and hopefully we can slip them slip at least one of the rollers back in all right so that's all I wanted to do was just slip one of the rollers in the one with the missing cap we're gonna leave for later um, buzz these back down and uh, should run a lot better. All right, she's all back together. So let's see how it runs on, well, with one working intake valve on number three. I think it should be much better than before. Everything's plugged in. Still a little rattly. Oh, nice. Very nice. Let's read the codes on the engine computer. Clear all DTCs. No DTCs. Much better. So, go to the dealer, get that last little stem cap pop that in. Holy crap, it's smoking. <laughs> Must have been some fuel built up in the exhaust. Um, yeah, we'll be right back.
All right, back to the 2010 Toyota Prius. Next day, the dealer got us some valve stem caps. That's the part number, just in case you lose any. They're sold in packs of 10, it's like 10 bucks. So we'll keep those for future Priuses because they keep coming in. 150,000 miles up to 200,000 miles. The head gasket is going to fail. There are millions of these cars on the road. So if you're a shop and you want to make some money, specialize in this. Good, uh, good business model. <laughs> so uh, let's rip the valve cover off again. Replace that valve stem cap. Put in the roller. And this thing should have should run on all 16 valves. Right now it's on 15. It runs smooth. It started up, you know, just fine. So uh, let's finish it up. All right. So quick and dirty here. We're just gonna loosen up all the cam caps again. And you don't need to loosen them up all the way. Just enough to get the roller in there. Make sure these lobes, whichever one you want to change, are facing away from the valves. And uh, just gently see the cams lifting up. Should be all we need. Let's try to slip it in there. All right, so I got the brand new valve stem cap right there. There it is. Now roller. So I don't know why these fell out. Maybe the guy flipped them around or something. The rounded end goes on the hydraulic lash adjuster part. So they go in like this. Nice and easy. Just slips right in there. Now we just tighten down the, uh, the cam caps again. And that's it. Evenly. So then we'll go through with a torque wrench and this thing should be, should run butter smooth. All right, so the 12 millimeter bolts are torqued to 20 foot pounds. I already went through all these once. Start with the middle and then go to the other ones. These are 10. An impact is fine. Seven foot pounds. If it makes you feel better. You can go through and check each one by hand. And uh yeah, we're almost done. All right, she's all back together. Those are all the parts that I had. The owner will take care of the cowl and the wipers and stuff. Coolant level's good. Oil level is fine. That's fresh oil. All right, let's uh, rescan it, clear all the codes out, take it for a spin, make sure it runs perfect. All right, we got a clean bill of health. Except for this weird exhaust heat management warning detected. Let's clear that out. Okay. Um, yeah, let's fire it up. Boink. Okay. Fired up smoothly. No blue smoke like last time. All the cylinders are breathing. Let's take it for a test drive. Let's 
so much fun. <laughs> Can't really feel the acceleration, but it's there. Seems to drive just fine. Take it around the block, or I mean, it's, it's totally happy. So. To wrap it up, um, the owner did almost did 100% uh, on the head gasket job. Just messed something up with those uh, two rockers on cylinder number three intake valves. So they just fell out and they're laying in the head. Okay, not the end of the world. Um, it's running smoothly, no damage done. But uh, overall, these cars, you think you're saving on gas? You better have a savings account for the repairs. Um, I call it the hidden cost of hybrids. I mean, to you know, to about 150,000 miles, you should be okay. After that, head gasket job, 2,500 bucks. Closer to 200,000 miles, you're gonna have the brake booster internal leak. That's those parts are super expensive with the uh, brake booster motor. Um, over three grand. And by that time, your battery, you know, the main EV battery is probably going to expire. Going to set codes. That's multiple thousands of dollars. So, I don't know. What's the point of owning one of these? I guess they drive okay. Um, maybe you feel good saving the environment. I don't know. Uh, you're definitely supporting local shops. That's good. <laughs> I mean, um, definitely doesn't make financial sense because any money you save on gas, you're going to spend uh, many times more than that on these predictable repairs. You know, the, these cars are pretty reliable. They only have a few uh, predictable failures, but when they happen, it's not cheap. And obviously, they'll be out of warranty. So, it is what it is. I mean, I can't knock it too hard. It still drives perfectly fine. Um, hopefully the head gasket will last, you know, outlast the rest of the car. But that's it. So pretty neat diagnosis. You know, several problems. Um, if you're gonna, when you when you're buying parts, buy high quality parts. Like ignition coils, don't go to AutoZone. At least go to Rock Auto and get some Denzos. Um, the head gasket itself. Uh, I've heard good things about Felpro. The OE gasket is. I mean, obviously it doesn't last over 150,000 miles, so it's kind of junky, so I might as well try something else. Um, that's it. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.